Hi, Jill here. I'm back with um, another episode of Cooking on the Side of Murder. Um, it's been a minute, it's been hot. Today's actually not bad, but I've got the stove already preheated and this eyes on to boil water, so it's already kind of fucking hot. Um, but this should be a quick one. Um, I've been getting, <laughs> you can't see me, <laughs> turned into John Cena shit. Um, I've been getting Misfit Market boxes. Um, which is just weird produce. Um, that's it. That's it, nothing else. Um, but this one came in here yesterday, and it's for a summer, the summer pasta salad. Um, that's this nice recipe. So, I didn't want to cook today, honestly. Um, I felt like shit. I wanted to stay in bed all day. Um, but the house was quiet, and I thought it to myself. So, as long as these asshole dogs don't bark, we can do this and bust one of these out. So, um, I'm going to make this because it actually looks really good. It's, um summer pasta salad. It's got some summer squash, which I got in my Misfit Market box. It's got lemon juice. I'm not going to put some of the stuff in it, um, but I'll post a picture of this and then um, I'll edit the recipe of what I did. Um, it only takes like 15 minutes. So, we're going to do that. I've got them. These squashes look rough, though. Um, it's okay. We're going to use them since we just got them. And that's the beauty of these boxes, is it's just produce that doesn't look as it's produce people, other people don't want. That's it. That's it. No, no. Um, I need to turn this because this is ridiculous. Okay. I stopped it and turned it. I'll edit it together later. It's fine. So, we're going to make this summer pasta salad because it's the end of summer. It's just cooling down. It's been raining, so it's not as hot. The fan in the window's on. Hopefully, that just fucking doesn't come through. Uh, who knows? It's fine. We'll figure it out. Oh my god, I got a new phone. I don't know how to fucking mark it. I just, I'm going to start going places, and my phone sucked, so uh, I bought a new phone. It's an investment. Um, it's on the payment plan. It's like nobody nobody can pay out right for a fucking phone. Um, but I'm going to be talking about this beauty, Karen Cupset. Karen Cupset. And her unsolved murder. Um, this one is one I came across. I don't remember how or why. Um... But it's one that it's, I was so intrigued by it that I wrote her name down on a pink post-it note and stuck it to my work computer. That's how fascinated I was with this murder. And it was there for months just looking at me. So, um, I figured we, we might as well talk about her. She's, um, seems like she was one of the sweetest, kindest people ever. Um, and I've read several books on it. There's a, um, James R. Elroy talks about her in his book, Murder Wave. Um, there's a lot of blog posts on her. Um, I bought her dad's autobiography. Her dad was, um, Irv Kepsit. If, um, if you're from Chicago, you probably know that. I didn't know who he was. He's a sports caster, just general <laughs> TV personality. I don't know. I bought his book, his autobiography, and he's got a whole chapter talking about her in it. Um, they were wrecked by it, of course. So, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. So, this one, just, um, uh, before I get to cutting, just a little background on Karen. Her name wasn't actually Karen, and um, she changed it. Her, she was born Roberta Lynn Cupsit on March 6th, 1941 in Chicago to parents Herb Cupsit, a gossip journalist, and his wife, es Esme Cupsit. Um, her parents called her Cookie, which in his book, it's very sweet and precious of how he talks about his cookie, and I just, it's adorable. Um, her mother encouraged her to go into acting. She got access to a lot of producers due to her father and his column in the Sun Times. I um, mean, in 1961, Jerry Lewis um, offered her a role in The Ladies' Man. She appeared on several TV shows, including Donna Reed, Show, Wild Country, G.E. True, Going My Way, The Andy Griffin Show, Death Valley Days, and Perry Mason, which was her last role that was aired after her death. So, there's the basics. So, I'm going to start on the squash. It says you got to mix this stuff together first, but I'm going to do this because these have to cook for like 15 minutes. We ain't got time to waste. I want to keep these short, but sometimes they end up just going and going and going, and I just don't know about y'all, but I feel like it's tiresome. 
Okay, so I'm gonna cut these. Put some olive oil on them, some salt. Spread them out on a baking sheet. Let's get those going. I've already washed them. So don't be like, oh my gosh, Jill. I think I'm gonna flip it back over. <laughs> We're gonna flip it back over. This is a weird process, um, but I'm gonna figure this out one of these damn days. Zappa, what? So, just so you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm gonna move it down some. I'll flip it back. I'm just gonna feed a bunch of good, a bunch of clips together. He has to be a dick. They have to want to be better than me in all aspects. So let's. So just cut them into little rounds. That one might be a little too big. Might not use all these. Who knows? Can't know. I don't know. It sounds delicious. So we're gonna cut these. I don't want that one. I don't want this one either. So we cut that one. I'm gonna edit and turn all these the fuck back around. This is weird. This is weird. I need a better setup because this is a shit show. Not really, but we cut them like this. So I'm gonna put those there while I cut this other one. I need to be trash can. Oh, we're gonna come in here and click, click, click around with our safety. This is what happens when you have four dogs. The blonde one's in bed, so. Unless she starts screaming, we're, we're cool. So we're gonna cut these. Cut, 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 cut. Um, boom, 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 boom. Okay. I have the water bowling because we're gonna do pasta. Um, it says do onchetta pasta, which is um, I googled it. I was like, why do I feel like I know what onchetta pasta is? But in the same sense, I'm like, what the fuck is onchetta pasta? Like using just use a name for it, and it's basically it looks like shells to me. That's the the best I could come up with. Is it just looks like shells? That's it. And I'm like, why can't we just say you shell pasta? Why does it have to have a fancy name? Okay, so we're gonna do this. Um, and it it says use the rest of the olive oil, but you know you guys know me, I'm a weirdo. So I'm gonna just drizzle with some olive oil. That might be too much olive oil. And I'm gonna take some salt and pepper. Salt and pepper here. always leave this light above the, the oven on. I saw a post on Facebook the other day. It says it's not a night light and I'm like, yeah it is. It's always been a night light. Shut up. Let let us live. So they look like this. We're gonna set a timer. I'm gonna set them for 15 minutes. We should be done with this shit show by then. The water is boiling. So, let's, uh, what do I have to do next? That takes 15 minutes, bring the pasta. Oh, we have to solve this. Let's solve the water. Right there. I'm gonna wait a couple minutes, put the pasta in. Oh, we can make a dressing. We can make a dressing. So, um, I'm gonna get the stuff for the dressing. While I get the stuff for the dressing, I need, I really just need olive oil and a whole lemon. That's it. I grew up in and I've moved back into it a couple years ago and honestly it's been a fucking lot um, and I say that in the best sense possible is that it's a fucking lot so they said to 
to juice a whole lemon. So I have a this. I found this in the house. It's pretty dope. I decided to keep it. I've been getting rid of a lot of shit that we just don't fucking need because there's 8,000 of them. <sighs> like, why do I need wine glasses from the fucking 50s? I don't. And they've just been in the pantry since I was five. My mom used to buy shit. And it was always to help people out. She would buy stuff just to help people out. Um, because she was a good person. Um, I feel the same way about Karen, actually, is that she was just a good person and probably was trying to help somebody out and they took advantage of her or something. But, so we're going to talk about, now that we know a little about Karen, I'm going to cut this one in. Uh, I'm going to go into a timeline. You know, guys know how much I like timelines. Of events of the last time she was seen, basically. So. It was a, it was November 28th. This was in 1963. Um, it was whatever year Kennedy was assassinated. There's a reason I said that. Um, which is noted to be the last day of her life. Um, so she had talked to her father on the phone earlier that day. They had a close relationship. She was very close with her mother, her father, and her brother. Um, at 6 p.m., she talked to her ex-boyfriend, Andrew Prine, on the phone to tell him about an abandoned baby that was left on her doorstep. Um, which is the craziest thing, is that, I don't, it's weird. Um, but yes, to tell her about the baby that was left on her doorstep. The abandoned baby that was left on her doorstep. She was supposed to have dinner with friends um, earlier that night and was late to it because of this. At 6.30, she was scheduled to have dinner with uh, Mark Goddick and his wife, Marcy Rogers Goddick, at their Beverly Hills home. She arrived an hour late at 7.30 by taxi. Um, during the dinner, the couple stated that she didn't really eat, um, and she's kind of off by moving her head at weird angles, and her voice sounded funny, and her people seemed smaller than normal. Um, Mark confronted her about the strange behavior, and she responded by putting her arms around him and crying. She told him that they had, uh, that she had taken a Milltown, a Milton, Milton, it's a, um, which is used, a short-term treatment symptom for anxiety and nervousness. I googled it, because I was like, what the hell is that? It's an anxiety medication, is what it is. It's what it is. It's anxiety medication. That they, I don't think they even make anymore. If they do, it's another name. But it sounded insane. Like, let me go take a meal town. Maybe I've misspelled it or something, but. I always find weird medications in some stories, and it's always. They're always unsettling names. I'm like, can't y'all just call it something else? Which they may call it something else because it's an unsettling name. Um. Choo -choo -choo -choo. At some point during the meal, she told the friends a story about the baby, how he had been abandoned on her doorstep earlier that day. So, it was something about this baby. But enough for her to tell three people about it. Um, the police, when they didn't hear from her, they, uh, they told the police about this and there was no reports of it. So, no one's quite sure what the hell she was talking about. Um, how do you DC the lemon? juiced it. This is a juicer for a, an orange. But, oh well. Citrus fruit. I did wash my hands before this. Don't worry. And I've got a footstep on the trash can. I think, gosh, Jill, you're so gross. Um, well, also in the same sense, I'm probably going to be the only fucking person eating this. Because I'm the only person that eats healthy in this house. So there's the juicy juicy. All about my juice, baby, baby. It ain't my fault that I'm not so good at Lucy. Okay. How am I supposed to assess the lemon? I've never assessed a lemon before. Come here, seeds. Damn seeds. I'm gonna go grow lemon trees. Um. So. My little dog jumped in the chair and it hit the... <laughs> he found a toy. Great. I think he's already took the squeaker out of it, so we're cool. So, at, at 8.30, so she was only there an hour, a taxi cab arrived 
to take her home. Um, and she promised to telephone the Goggins when she got there. So, that was really nice. This hat, probably should have used a different sister, but this is like the only one I have. It's not a sister, it's a great. This hat, anybody know? Oh, it's on side. I'm an idiot. Don't mind me. She promised a phone. I don't have any cuts on my hands. This would suck. I usually have some fun where I've done my nails or something stupid. Goodness, this. <laughs> this is so weird. <laughs> I have a rest. <laughs> I've never done that. So it's a it's an adventure. I've never made this. I usually try to make things before I, I do this. But oh well. It's a, it's, trust the theory and practice. Chapter seven. <laughs> oh my God, it's so hot. I feel like my face is melting. So Karen took a cab home. Eight thirty that night. I promise I took my medication today. I can't. Um. I don't think she found the goddess. It's in my notes, but I, I can't pick up my phone right now. Because I have lemon on my hands. I don't want to lemon my phone. Or do I? She was home for a while, and then a little while after that, some other friends came over. And I'll get you their names in one second. Because I can't for the life of me remember it right now. I think I just wasted all the zest on it. This is weird. I need a better zester. I think you're supposed to use a thing with it. Oh well. Okay, I'm done zesting. I can't. This is okay. Maybe I should have pre zested. Maybe I should have not. juice on your hands. Wash them. Don't touch your face. Don't touch your eyes. Okay. So. Okay. Um, she arrived home at 9 p.m. And Edward Stephen Rubin, uh, who was a free rent rider, really left at her home. About 10.30... Karen apparently went for a walk and ran into an actor, Robert Hathaway, who she brought back and joined the two of them. So she went for a walk and left her friend at her house. It's kind of rude, but... I mean... He was okay with it, so... Um, but it, clearly she wasn't in her right state of mind, according to her friends that evening, so... They'll let it slide. Um, and sometimes if you're really good friends with someone, you can do that. You're like, hey, I'm, I'm going to go do this. Like, I just need to get out. And if they don't want to go, that's fine. Um, she told them also about the baby, and the man started to watch TV and then drank coffee until she fell asleep. Um, this made me assume that she either was not drinking coffee um, or was on something stronger that it canceled it out. Like, I don't care what you take. Sometimes, depending on the medication... You can caffeinate yourself up so much, but no. Um, depending on what it is, I have hair all in my face. Ooh, I need I'm gonna cut my hair off. Um, sometimes just coffee just won't won't fix it. So I'm gonna put this. I've got in garden rotini. Um, I think it would be good in pasta. I'm gonna put about half the box in there. About half, just half. Hello. Oh, I thought this was kind of Um. One of them helped her to bed, and they watched her crawl in bed, and then they went back to the living room to watch TV with the other guy, which I thought it was weird, but if you're good enough friends with somebody, then of course, like, they can be in your house even when you're asleep, um, and they're not going to be like, hey, why are you being a, a bitch? Come hang out with us. Half a cup of olive oil in this dressing? Um, but 
but again, if you're really good friends with someone, they can do that, and it's going to be fine. Is it really half a cup? Yeah, it says half a cup. I don't know why that seems insane to me. Good thing I have a pot. No, there's things I'll boil. seems weird to me um I mean like again depending on who how close to friends you are with someone and uh it seems like she was pretty good friends with these guys so um at at 11 15 the men left and made sure the door was locked behind them like good friends if your friends leave your house and uh, don't lock your door. You need to find new friends. Because you always lock your door. Um, my roommate does that all the time. Like, they just won't lock the door when they come home. And I'm like, we're going to get murdered. Like, have some common sense. What the hell's wrong with you? Um, so, at least that's good on them that they did lock the door. Um, the men then went to Hathaway's apartment where they were later joined by Karen's boyfriend, Andrew Pine, who was Hathaway's neighbor. Um, and they watched television and talked about it at 3 a.m. Around 11.30, 12, Prynne called Karen after coming home from a date in which Karen told him the police came and got the baby. Like I said, the story was never confirmed. They never had any reports of it. Um, and especially if it's the police were involved for the police to be like, I don't know what the hell she's talking about. Um, you know? So it's weird. Um... And then I'm gonna whisk this stuff together. Do I like this? I like that. We're gonna we'll find out. So, this was all on the 28th. On the 30th, two days later, so it had been maybe a day, a day and a half later, um, the Goddens went to her apartment after they failed, after she failed to telephone the couple, couple as promised, and they just had a funny feeling that something went wrong. They found her nude body laying on the couch. At first, they assumed she had died from an overdose, um, and she'd been dead for two days. Um, and they assumed she had died of an overdose because of some of the things in the apartment and the way she was acting. I'm going to put some more pepper and salt in this. should have tasted it first. I'm a bad chef. This is a passion project. We're learning together. But it, it looks like a... It's actually really good. Like you wouldn't think it. Olive oil and some. Yeah. That's really good. Holy crap. Olive oil. Lemon. Some zest. It's actually not a bad time. Okay. Um. Stop beeping. So, there were some factors with the scene that were a little weird. Um, but it was also why they, you know, thought she was, um, it was an overdose, which I guess is when you can find somebody nude. Um, I imagine it's like the, the Marilyn Monroe effect. They also found her nude in bed and she had overdosed. Um, that's a story for another time, friends. Okay. So... Um, these actually look really good. I'll show you. Uh, I probably need to update up my ADHD medication. Those actually look really good. I'm very excited about this. Ow. Oh, it's just hot. So, they searched the apartment. And the police did find prescriptions um, for Destroxin, Milton, Milltown, and Amabas, and some other... I'm not a doctor, so I don't know how to pronounce any of that shit. I'm also not a doctor from the 60s. Um, but all of that's kind of the, I, I googled it, it was all kind of the same thing. Um, they also found a note written by Karen that reflected in some details her emotions um, regarding issues of her life. Her parents' self, self-image problems with her boyfriend, people she admired. Um, the note's in the book by James Elroy, and it's some pretty hard stuff of how belittling she was to herself. 
Um, it also includes parts of her diary that she kept. Um, it just just harsh. Um, I highly suggest that book. Um, the beginning of it's really good. I'm almost at the end of it, and it's been tough to get through. Um, and I don't know why. If it's just because I just I'm not interested in where the story goes because the the first couple of chapters. I'm gonna do a review for my blog on it. But the first couple of cha chapters, he breaks down a murder, and then the rest of it's some weird um, mob shit. Like I don't, I don't know. He lost me. I was like, wait, what is going on? So I'm in the middle. I think the last couple of chapters. If I can get through this part about the mob and Frank Sinatra and Sammy Davis Jr., I think I can get to the rest of it. It's just, ugh, it's been bad. Um, also in the Chicago Tribune. So of course she had a write up in the Chicago Tribune because her and dad was a, a journalist and very well known figure. Um, a detective stated that the apartment was torn all up. And there must have been a tremendous struggle. They found several prints at the scene. One was Karen's, one was Ruben's, and the other two sets couldn't be matched. Which I thought was weird, because Hathaway's was also there. Why were his prints not there? Unless that was just one of the prints they couldn't match. I don't know. Um, so, the L.A. County coroner, Harold Cade, determined that the death was due to strangulation because of a broken hyperboom, hyroid bone in her throat. Um, and the official death was ruled a homicide. Stir this pasta. It should be done in a couple minutes. Um, I also need to cut up some tomatoes. I don't have any cherry tomatoes. I also, need, I also have feta too. I'll do that here. Um, let me get through the suspects. Let me get through the suspects. But I'm going to grab my tomato. Let me use one tomato. I have four tomatoes, so I'm going to need two tomatoes. Do you guys like my logic? Because I have four tomatoes. I use two tomatoes. I think it's a, a solid thing. Okay, so of course the first suspect is her boyfriend, Andrew Pine. Um, he stated during questioning that he had talked to her twice on the phone the day before her murder. They had a lover's quarrel at the time due to some anonymous threat letters that they had both received after um, he and Karen received. After the death, um, after her death, they realized that, um, I feel like they didn't realize this before, or Andrew at least realized this before, Karen sent these threatening letters to herself and her boyfriend. They found um, magazines that she'd cut up to do it. Which, I mean, I feel you, girl. Like, Andrew didn't seem like he was very good to her. Um, so, I mean, sometimes you get a little crazy. You get a little crazy, your mind didn't work right. Um, I get it. I, I get it. Um, the police thought this was good enough motive for murder that he found out about it. Um, but he did have a, an alibi. Um, he took a girl to a movie that night, and he told Edwin... Edward and Bob, who were at Karen's apartment that night, um, he went to the rodeo, which was weird. Um, he stated that on Tuesday he ran into an actress in there, and they went out on Wednesday, and she ver the girl verified it with the police. Um, he did take a polygraph test, and it was inconclusive, and his parents, her parents don't believe he did it. Um, Cup even states in his book, we don't think Andrew did it. Um... The second, second and third suspect that I have is Edward Rubin, um, since he was one of the last people to see, see her alive and confirmed his events that night. Hathaway confirmed his events that night. He did change his story three years later, stating that he and Hathaway went to the rain check room where he hung out with three girls after Hathaway left. Also, that Andy didn't come over that night. It was the night before. And then Hathaway backed up that story as well. But they were there that night, and his prints were also found at the scene. Um, Hathaway same thing said he was with Ruben they both had the same story so it's it's really suspicious that the last two people that saw her alive other than the person that killed her changed their stories and then backed each other up um David Lang was Karen's neighbor um in Cup's book I didn't realize this but Karen was actually the one that helped him get the apartment downstairs they had met re briefly and she's like hey he goes hey I need a place to stay Karen was like oh there's a vacancy in the apartment below me and helped him get the place above below her um, another neighbor stated that he walked into her apartment the night Karen was murdered. He told police that 
He walked up to Karen's door on Friday night, jiggled the door knob, which was unlocked, but didn't go in. He ran into some cops that night and didn't tell them about it. When they tried to question him, he turned up missing. They did have a report from another woman stating that he called her to say, I killed you know. I killed her, you know. When the police finally spoke with him, they stated the comment was a joke and that it didn't try it. Only to tell him that the fact that he lied about that and didn't try, but did he did try her doorknob but didn't go in. Um, and stated that he was in bed with the girl the night he was killed. He did take a polygraph test, which was inconclusive. Inconclusive. Um, you sound like a psychopath, sir. Like a straight psychopath. Um, honestly, he's my suspect. He's my pick. He's my pick. Um, so, <laughs> this one is an insane one, okay? And this might be the reason why her name was on my computer for so long. Um, the Italian American Mafia. You're like, Jill, you're, you're being crazy. Listen. Um, apparently, there was a woman who dialed her local operator roughly 20 minutes before the shooting of President J John F. Kennedy in Dallas, who stated that he was going to be shot. Penn Jones Jr. claimed in his book on the assassinated that it was Karen. Also, the fact that she was killed right after this. So, that's why I said JFK was assassinated October... No, fuck. November 22nd, 1963. Karen was murdered... November 28th, 1963. So, like, five days later. Um, Jones claimed that Karen was told this by her father, who was given advance notice by, by Jack Ruby. Jack Ruby was a nightclub owner in Chicago who killed Lee Harvey Oswald, who killed JFK. Um, and then her murder was committed to apparently silence her and send a message to her father. Um, about everything. Her father has denied this um, theory and was backed up by Karen's boyfriend, Andrew Pine. The two of them were, um, they were in Palm Springs the, when Kennedy was assassinated. So they were together like five days before she died. Um, and they were in Palm Springs together and Karen was visibly upset. Not, you know, upset like, oh my god, they actually did it, you know. Something that someone who had prior knowledge to an assassination would have done. If I knew something was going to happen and didn't say anything, you could probably tell I'd be fake shocked. I'm not, you, no one's that good of an actress. Unless maybe Meryl Streep. Um, who knows? Um, and I didn't see this mentioned in her father's book, but I only read the chapter on Karen. Um, he does have a chapter on Jeff Kato. Um, but her reaction was not one to, to prior knowledge. Um, the two operators who called, who got the call, so the lady called twice, they, they were called once and then they transferred it, um, were interviewed by the F, 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 I can't fucking talk today, by the FBI, um, with a women's description, did not match Karen's voice, and they stated it was someone older than her and believed to be mentally disturbed. Um, they checked out every weirdo, um, in the area, nothing ever panned out. Um, Karen's mother believed in them, and um, they also, her parents invested, they, her parents tried everything. They did literally everything to solve this murder. They um, hired sockets, they hired private investigators, everything to um, do that. A few of them said it was Andy, um, one said it was Lang, and the rest are unknown random men. Her parents, they, they did everything. Um, one interesting fact, though, was that the L.A. coroner's um, Harold Cade, some police thought that the doctor broke her bone himself since he didn't really find too much other than um, a, hemorrhage inside of her, a hemorrhage inside of her throat. Um, plus, he had a reputation also um, told another colleague after, at least I didn't break the hyoid bone on this one. Also, I googled him and found a lawsuit from July of 68 or 69, a couple years later, when they claimed the autopsy was performed with a neglect and that it resulted and therefore the plaintiff was wrong, wrongfully charged with the murder in the first degree. I've included a link to this in the, to this entire document um, in the post. And some police thought she was on drugs and just tripped and fell and broke her bone and then crawled to the couch and died. What? Um, the only thing I thought was weird was the doctor was that they were like, oh, okay, um, it's weird for just the random things, but that could just be...
someone was wrongfully accused, they're going to think of any possible way that they can to get off. So, like, the coroner fucked this up. It's the coroner's fault. I didn't do anything. The coroner did this. I completely understand that theory. But someone saying, oh, he said this, that's a little weird. I mean, he could have. I don't know. Um, I feel like I know more about Harold Cade, but he was the L.A. coroner for a long time. So, it's quite possible anything happened. I don't know. Okay, I went to dump the water, but look at this pasta. So, we're going to dump the pasta in there. And then, oh, no, let's not set that there, Jill. What are you doing? That I was just on. I should have stayed in bed. Shit. I need this back. Okay, so we've got the pasta done. Um, oh, the I was still on. So it says to pour this over it while it's still hot. I guess to get all that goodness going in there. And then, I feel like I need a spatula on this one again a lot. That might work. It's still hot. This isn't still hot. So I'm going to combine all these. Um. I don't know, I think it's weird, just some of the things about her murder. Um, but like I said in the beginning, I think she seemed like, um, just everybody's accounts of her, even the police said this, of people they interviewed, they're like, Karen was so sweet. Um, so I feel like maybe she, you know, um, somebody took advantage of that sweetness, which happens, and it's fucking sad. I went to wash some tomatoes. Um, it's fucking sad that people take advantage of people that way. Um, I think it was David Lang. Personally. Um, purely. I need to sharpen this now. Purely because he, um, there's bald dog food there. Hold on, I'm gonna flip this. We're trying new angles, friends. So you can look at my boobs and watch me cut this. Um, so we've got this all in here. Um, I've got that mixed around. I'm going to cut these tomatoes and then I'm going to put some feta in there. So I think it was David Lang. This is nothing you will eat. Plainly because, I mean, Car clearly he used his friendship with Karen to his advantage to help. She helped him get an apartment. Um, and for him to just say stuff like that, like, who does that? I think it's weird. To be like, yep, I killed her. Or, hey, I went and shook her doorknob that night, but I didn't go in. It was unlocked. Um, why would it be unlocked, though, if uh, the two guys that were there earlier in the night said they locked the door behind them? They'd specific to say, we locked the door behind us. Fuck. Look, tomatoes are weird. Um, I don't know. It just seems very suspicious. Um, and then for him to just fucking disappear. Come on cut my nail. Not my finger. It was my nail. That was hard. Um, it's very, it's very suspicious. Um, and this, it took some poor girl's life who seemed like she had a, a very bright and prospecting future. Um, I will tell you one thing though. Um, the chapter in her father's book is, is hard to read. Um, cause it really, really took its toll on her parents. Uh, I'm going to flip this back over now. Um, it took a toll on them to the point that they wanted to kill themselves. Um, there's one part in it that he said he wanted to go jump off a bridge. Uh, it's the bridge that's actually named after him now. Um, but like, it's hard. Your children aren't supposed to, parents aren't supposed to outlive their children, you know? Um, this looks fucking good as shit. I'm going to put some feta on it. Um, but I don't know what happened to David Lane, but that's what I think. Um, if anybody has any other theories or suggestions, let me know. I would love to know. Um, this story fucks with me. I think it's the JFK aspect. Maybe it was I was Googling something about JFK. I don't know how much feta you're supposed to put in this. But... I mean, cheese is good, right? 
Oh, it was one fourth cup of feta. Oh shit. Um, I didn't use half the stuff that was in this, but I don't care about shallots or capers. Um, add the cooked uh, incredible with feta and serve immediately. So, look at that. Actually, looks pretty good. I'm gonna take a little nibble, nibble, nibble. They're really good. It's a lot. It's not heavy. It's really fucking good. Um, I don't think I did too bad for the first time making something random. Um, I'm gonna go eat some of this. Um, and relax. I'll post this whenever. Um, if you guys have any theories on Karen, send them my way. Um, I feel like I've went down a constant rabbit hole of them on this girl. Um, and it's sad to have your life taken at such an early age. I think she was only, she was only in her 20s. Like, not old enough to do anything. Um... Damn it, why don't I know how old she is? She was 22. 22. Um, just a gorgeous, gorgeous girl. Seemed like she had so much potential. Um, it's, it's really, it's tough, you know. Um, no one should have their life cut that short. Um, if you have murders that you would like for me to cover or just suggest, I'm happy to get on rabbit holes. I have a bunch of these. Um, I'm going to do start doing full episodes. I'm going to start doing some minis. I've already posted one of those. So let me know. Uh, I'm going to go eat this and um, go back to bed because it's fucking hot in here. Like I'm sweating right now. So stay safe um, and I'll see you next time.